So if I could go back in time, that's what I would do. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Inyoma and today is going to be a video about my locks. And I'm gonna show you guys how I wash and retwist them and just give you some tips about things you should know before you get locks and things nobody talks about when you have locks or when you decide to get locks. So let's go. So I would say the first thing nobody tells you about having locks is how heavy it gets the longer that you have it. And as you can see, my hair is in a bun. It has been a bun for, it has been in a bun for about, I'm gonna say three weeks. Just leave it up here, don't touch it. So it gets heavy. That's why when I have my hair up this high, it's the only time that I don't feel any kind of pressure on my neck or my back because it's just heavy. And when it's wet, it's even heavier. So <laughs> you've seen those videos of, I think there was a video of a girl like who had really long locks and she like flipped it in the, in the ocean and she kept going with the hair. That's real. Like the longer your hair gets, the heavier it gets. So keep that in mind. But I'm gonna take this, what is this called? Head wrap? I don't know guys. Take it down and show you what the roots of my hair look like. I went for like a six mile walk this morning. So everything's a bit, you know, weird looking. But I don't retwist my hair often. And that's maybe tip number two for people that are getting locks is like there's this little obsession about making sure that your hair is always neat or professional looking and always tightly retwisted and stuff. And depending on the kind of hair you have, that can really damage your edges and your roots. So you end up having like super, super thin locks, which is just not healthy in the long term. So I personally only retwist my hair four times a year at the most usually. And that's because if I feel like it's getting rough or around the, you know, just doesn't look neat. I brush it or I put a, a headband on um, or I make it curly so that it detracts attention. Detracts, detract is the right word. But also it distracts you away from the rough roots of my hair. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I know that there's some people who retwist their hair like once a week or twice a month and they're able to keep their roots and their edges intact. I am not one of those people. I need to give my hair time to breathe so I don't retwist often and it's not actually recommended for most people to retwist often because it does damage your locks long term because you're putting constant pressure on it. Basically think about it, if you had loose natural hair, you wouldn't want to be rebraiding every week or every other week either. You would want to leave your hair in a protective hairstyle so that your hair doesn't get damaged. So the same principle applies when you have locks is you kind of want to just leave it alone for a little bit so that it doesn't get damaged long term. That's tip number two. So let's take this hair down. My mind, what shall we find under here? I'm joking, y'all. My hair is not, it's not really dirty because I, I just walk and I do yoga so I don't actually sweat too, too much. It actually smells good. It still smells like the essential oils that I put in. So like I said, I've had my hair for nine years now and it's actually an interesting story how I got my locks. I was in Montana I lived in Missoula, Montana for a year. I was doing my, my residency and I was on Pinterest. I was one of the two black people in Montana at the time. And I had loose natural hair at a, at a time when loose natural hair was still not like super popular. So I was like, I really, really need to do something with this hair. I don't want to be twisting it every night and doing something every night. So like, what can I do? And Pinterest was showing me all these pictures of people with locks and it was so nice and easy. And I'd never considered getting locks because it just never crossed my mind. But then I saw all these Pinterest articles and pictures and I was like, and Tumblr too. And I was like, oh, this is hot. I can totally do this. So I looked around me and there was nobody to do it, of course. So I drove my car to Spokane, Washington, which is close by, then booked a flight to Seattle and stayed with my girl, Jemima, shout out to you, and got my hair professionally, uh, my locks professionally started in Seattle at a natural hair salon and it took a long time. But shout out to that girl. She really got me the the kind of um, thickness that I wanted and made sure that my hair was good and it's been locked ever since. So number three, something nobody tells you about when you get locks is when you first start out and you choose the thickness that you want, keep in mind that your hair is gonna get naturally thicker over time, especially if you have 4C hair like I do, as it locks around itself, it's going to get thicker. So when you first see your locks, once you first lock it, it's gonna look really thin and, and scraggly and just not as attractive as you expect it to look, but give it time because it is going to get thicker the longer that you have it 
as the hair locks around itself, which is really cool. I think that's really cool. So yeah, keep that in mind. The thickness might not appear right away, but it does get better. Also, you're gonna have varying thickness of locks. So let me see if I can find a thin lock for you guys to compare. I think I have some really thin locks on the edges here. It just depends on the texture of your hair and how you retwist it over time. So here's like a thin lock that I cut. You can see how short it is. Really thin lock, relatively speaking. And then I'm gonna find a thick lock for you because I have really thick hair in the middle of my head. So the locks are, are thicker there. So it's very normal to have varying thickness. And now I can't find it when I'm looking for it. But anyway, yeah, here's a thick one. Compare the thin and the thick. You're gonna have varying degrees of thickness on the same head. It's just, and this is a lot longer too because I didn't cut it, but Actually, I cut this one too, it's shorter, but it's not as short as this one. So yeah, you're gonna have hair that is thicker in some places, thinner in others, and that is normal. I've seen some people that have like really thick, even locks all around their head. I envy y'all, I'm not one of them people. So I just embrace the, the thin versus the thick and, you know, leave it alone. It just adds variety to life, so. So that's number, I think that was number three. Yeah, varying thickness of locks. Number four. Well, I talked to you guys about it before. I'm just gonna show you like, now that the hair is down, I haven't seen my hair down in weeks. It's always surprising. I'm gonna take a brush and just brush it through because I wanna release any kind of lint that might be in here. Oh yeah, that brings us to tip number four. Your hair will collect lint like it's its job. Nobody told me that when I was getting locks because again, it was like 2011. So I just, when I was in Montana, that probably didn't help. So I didn't know anybody that had locks and didn't know anything about locks. I just thought it looked pretty. But yes, lint, and I, this is me picking out lint as I talk to y'all, lint will collect in your hair and you can try your best to do all the things like wear a satin bonnet at night and wrap your hair and not wear wool sweaters and stuff, but it's like law of attraction. The lint kind of just follows your hair as you're walking. I have found other people's hair stuck in my locks, kid you not and had to pull it out. I'm like, why is this string of long brunettes or blonde hair in my hair? And I'm like, that ain't mine. So it came from somewhere else. So that's something to keep in mind. You are going to find lint in your hair, no matter what you do, no matter how careful you are. And I admit I wasn't the most careful person when I first started, but I have been over the years and I still find lint. Some of it gets buried in your locks and that's why I had to cut some of my locks because I just kept digging, digging into the lint until it became really thin. The hair became really thin, which is not advisable. Some people just dye their hair to cover up the lint, which is another thing you can do because some of that lint you really can't, you really can't get it out. To help with the lint, you can just brush your hair before you, you wash it. That way it kind of just grabs some of the lint in there and takes it out. All right, so I think I brushed it pretty well. Let's see how it's looking. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something else about locks for you guys. The color of your hair might change when you have locks. I've seen people that are blessed to have jet black hair and just jet black locks. I never had jet black hair. My hair has always been some variation of this color since I was a kid. But when I had locks, uh, here's some lint. See, I don't know if you can see that, but there's lint. Yeah. When I got locks, they became even browner. And I think it's because of the sun. That's my story anyway. But my hair was brown and then it just became browner from having locks. And I think the sun bleaches my hair easier when it's locked. And then also because it's basically just dead hair wrapping around itself, you're gonna just have a variation of colors. So again, you can always dye your hair if you don't like it, but I don't mind. It is what it is. I mean, I, I kind of like it because it, it gives you different colors of highlights in the hair. So I have some parts that are like really dark. It starts out dark and then it just goes to like a brownish copper color. But here, here's an example of lint even after brushing. You see that? Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest bait of my existence with locks. It's just lint, lint, lint. Getting rid of lint. And this is hair that has been in a bun for weeks and still lint everywhere you look. Okay, so now to the washing of the hair. I do apple cider vinegar, baking soda rinses every once in a while, but my hair is just not, I've been keeping it very clean, so it's not very dirty. So I just don't feel like I need one right now. So I'm not gonna show you guys that part. I'm just gonna wash my hair as I regularly do. First thing I do is I use, honestly, 
dish detergents. And I learned this from Yanni, the, the localologist. I think she still has her YouTube channel up, so I'm gonna link it. But this is what I used to wash my hair in the first go around is a dish detergent. And I like Method Dish Soap because it's mostly natural, plant-based, all that good stuff. And the bottle is recyclable. So I use this, this is their lemon and mint and basically citrus-based soap. And this really strips your hair of all the oils that may have accumulated in it and grime and basically what it does to your dishes is what it's doing to your hair so people that have loose natural hair i know they like to co-wash and sometimes not strip their hair often with locks things just get stuck in here so you want to strip the hair and get it super duper clean as much as you can and i wish i had known this before i started locking my hair because at some point in montana Again, one of only two black people there. I used when. You guys remember when there was a lawsuit against them? And I used when because it was like, you don't need soap. Just use this. Your hair will be so much healthier and whatnot. And I think I still have buildup in my locks from using when. You want to strip your locks. You do not want to just use anything that's going to do a gentle cleanser, in my opinion. Because I just, having had it for nine years now, I'm like, you need to keep this hair clean. So dish soap, strip the locks of all the stuff that may be in there. Don't use when. I don't know if they're still alive, but don't use them no matter what. So that's number one. And then I, after I do around with that, I go ahead and I use Neutrogena Anti Residues Shampoo. And this is another one that also strips the hair. So it's very, very, what's it called? Stripping. <laughs> yeah, it strips your hair basically on top of the dish soap. So again, I need to strip my hair, so that's what I do. And then after I strip it all, I use the Neutralizing Conditioner Shampoo. Shampoo conditioner, because my hair feels really dry and ooh, it just feels really weird after I strip it all off. So this kind of restores the hair back to its natural state. And I really like this one. I don't remember where, I'm pretty sure I saw this in another lock, locked person's YouTube channel. And I tried it and I love it and I get it from Sally's or Amazon or wherever. So yes, it restores your hair's natural pH balance. So those are the three things that I use to wash my hair. And when I wash my hair, I just wash it regularly, I guess. I don't divide it into sections or anything. I just, you know, go all the way in, getting it really, really nice. And I wash it all the way to the edges and you know, wring it really dry. So that's how I wash. I'm gonna try and record this wash. I don't know how this is gonna work, but let's try it. All right, guys, let's go. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do this. So, numero uno. This right here. Super heavy. Just keeping the hair like this, my neck hurts. Long hair problem, y'all. All right, round number two. By the second round, it's foaming a lot easier because the hair is cleaner. So, again, this dish soap really helps strip your hair of anything that might be in there. So, give it a try if you haven't. If you have locks, I don't know about loose natural hair. I never use this when I have loose hair. <sighs> my neck hurts. Oh. So that's round one. Round number two is with this, and this is the Neutrogena anti residue Shampoo. The hair is pretty clean at this point. This is just basically to strip it even more because I'm trying to get it all out, so. I have never worn clothes in the shower before. It feels kind of weird. And after using the dish soap, you don't even need a lot of this stuff because it's, again, just overkill. The hair is pretty clean. It's just to get any stragglers that are left over. After this step, your hair just feels about as dry as the Sahara Desert because it literally just, <gasps> it strips everything off, everything. Y'all might tell me today, sorry, I just ate like a large meal, so. <laughs> so our third step and final step for washing, I know it's a lot, but 
It's neutralizing shampoo so that the hair does not look as and feel as dry as a Sahara Desert. So let's go. All done. That's done. Oh my gosh. The next tip I'm going to give you guys is, of course, I'm going to link the products I used to wash my hair in the description below, Amazon links. Um, if you don't want to use those affiliate, affiliate links to Amazon for whatever reason, there's some very valid reasons why people don't want to shop at Amazon, and I understand that. Please try and find them if you want at like other stores, Sally's or you know Walmart and all the places for the dish soap. But if you do want to just buy them below, the links are below. And I'm also going to link below this link a link to this towel and it is a microfiber towel that I use to dry my hair and it works wonders otherwise my locks will take forever and two days to dry so this is what I use now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this off real quick not too too dry because I am going to oil my hair so if you notice I did not use any conditioner in the shower and that's because I don't condition my hair with any kind of commercial conditioners. Again, with locks, you're just trying to minimize residue and things getting built up, things get, getting stuck in your hair. I have not found a conditioner that will not get stuck in this hair and I just don't want to risk it at all. So I do not use a conditioner. I just oil my scalp and a little bit of my actual hair, but mostly my scalp and the roots just to get it nice and moisturized, but no conditioner. If there are any people that have locks that use conditioners and you have one you recommend that doesn't leave build up, let me know. My experience, they all leave build up. So I'm trying to get scalp that's like clean. Y'all see that? Clean scalp. That's basically the goal. Let's go ahead and oil the scalp. Location change. Okay, sorry if you hear noise in the background. My sister is chatting away with some friends. I'm gonna go ahead and retwist my hair now. As I said, I don't use conditioner on my hair because of build up. So I just mix oils. This is basically 90% olive oil with some castor oil, Jamaican black castor oil. I hear there's Haitian black castor oil. I don't know what the difference is, honestly. So if you know, please let me know. But this is Jamaican black castor oil, olive oil, eucalyptus oil, myrrh, and tea tree oil. Maybe some orange oil in here too. I don't, I don't like have a specific formula for essential oils. I just know the base is usually olive oil mixed with castor oil. And then whatever smells good to me, usually peppermint and eucalyptus and all that good stuff to make the scalp tingle. So that's what I use. And I use this and when my hair is wet, I retwist. And if I need it to be a little bit wetter while retwisting, I just spray it with water. I don't use gels as well because another tip for you, <laughs> build up. I used to use gels when I first started and I don't think that was the best choice because it leaves buildup that a lot of them is just next to impossible to wash away. That's why I just try to go as natural as possible. So water and oils, which I can strip away with my shampoos. If you're starting out locks, I would say the best way to start out is with two strand twists or with three plait braids because if you start out the way I did, which is with coils, you do need gels to maintain that and it just, adds a necessary buildup. So that's why I say, if you can, just go ahead and start with two strand twists or, or braids because the hair will just stay in place that way and you can just retighten the roots without having to use any kind of gels to keep the coils in place. So if I could go back in time, that's what I would do. But for now, we minimize the buildup as much as we can. So you can also heat this oil up. I'm not doing that today because y'all, this daylight savings is next level. The sun is probably gonna set in 30 minutes and it's just what, four o'clock? So I don't like that at all. I gotta finish filming this before. So just to show you how I retwist, I usually separate my hair into two parts. I twist one side and I usually wash something while I'm twisting because otherwise I would go crazy. <laughs> it takes a while. I also don't know how many locks I have. I think the last time I counted was a few years ago and it was like 187 or something like that. So it takes me a while to retwist my hair, which is another reason why I only do it <laughs> four times a year. Let's go ahead and oil this scalp in. I'm actually going to oil both sides of my hair at once because it's just easier because they're equally wet right now. Oh, and I just realized this says the ordinary glycolic acid solution. It's not. I am repurposing bottles because I don't want to throw away plastic. So I just mix it in here. I washed the bottle thoroughly when, when the glycolic acid finished and I just mix the oil in here and use reuse the bottle. So you can also use it for water and stuff. So are you coming out? Yeah, it's coming out. So while I oil the scalp, something else I will say about locks that is kind of a negative thing or has been in my experience, and I know a couple other people that have gone through this, is just 
how thin the ends get after a while. So I'll show you a couple of my, my ends and how they look like. And this is the reason why I cut off so much of my locks because First of all, some of the ends were just full of buildup because when I first started locks, I just didn't know about buildup and taking care of my hair. So I had too much buildup in those locks. They were not being shampooed out, they weren't coming out, so I cut them. Those are basically all the locks in the back. So you can see these short locks. See how, how short that is? This should be on my booty at this point in time, but it ain't because I cut it because I just didn't like the way it looked. All these short locks in the back are from me not liking the buildup and the way they, they looked. So they're all so short, short, short. Yeah, so build up in the back just made me cut my locks. They couldn't be saved. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have cut them, I don't know, but I just didn't like the way they look. And I was like, it's just hair. To me, it's just hair. But one thing about locks and showing you the, the ends of the hair, what happens is how thin it gets, sometimes in the middle and sometimes at the end. So here's a lock, thick, thick, thick. See right there how thin it is? You see how it just kind of falls apart right here in the middle? Yeah, I do not like this. I just don't understand why it does that. And I have, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, basically. Because when I put it in a bun, it's not tight. It's a very loose bun. It's just folded in on itself. I keep it loose. I massage the scalp. So I don't know why that thins out. And at the very end of some of my locks, you can just kind of see, like, here's another one that's like super thin, super thin right there. Yeah. And it happens all over my hair. And I, I do, you can see like little knots on them and it's cause I twist the knots around the hair to try and fortify it and strengthen it. I, and this is after cutting, like I've cut a bunch of these locks out, but I was like, if I just keep cutting my hair this way, very soon I will have zero hair on my head. And some of them are just healthy all the way to the bottom. Like this one is thick all the way to the bottom. And I don't know, Man, if I could find out why some of my hair does this, I would be so grateful. Please, if you know, let me know, because some of it is just thin at the end for no reason. No reason. Look at that. Look at all the way, the thinness from here to here. No reason. I don't get it. So I'm probably going to cut this part off because it's just a straggler right now. And then some of it is just thick all the way. No thinness. I treat all of you so nicely. I don't know why it does that, but I cut off a bunch of my hair. Like I cut off probably four inches of my hair <laughs> because I just didn't like how thin it was. Like here's one that's also extremely, extremely thin. So this is, this is getting just, I'm just doing that because there's just no point. So here is the hair that just came off. And I know this happens to other people and this is this is after knotting it. I don't know if you can see that, but I actually knotted it there to strengthen it and hold it. And it still comes off. So I was just like, you know what? It's just part of life. If it's gonna come off, it's gonna come off. There's no point in me just holding on to dead hair. So just, you know, let it go. But it does make me sad because my hair would be a lot longer right now if if I didn't have these issues with really thin ends and it happens to a lot of people with locks. I just don't know why. I don't know if it's the heaviness of the hair, whatever it is, but just for some reason, thin. Thick, 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 and then thin. So I don't I don't know what it is. It is it's just so sad. But yeah, one day I'll figure it out. So just keep that in mind. That that could very well happen to you as you get locks. You just have pieces of hair. That come out and to me it's just better for me to pull them out or cut them out instead of me walking down the street one day or at work and have it come off and people are like what's that you know so no i just i just take them off because i'm like nah it's just hair it'll grow back and if it doesn't we'll just cut it off right it's just that's just what it is i try to keep it in perspective okay back to oiling this smells so good i love the way orange or any kind of citrus smells in the hair and then eucalyptus feels tingling, so that's great. And I'm just oiling the scalp, because that's what really matters the most. Like if I'm going to an event, which will not happen until probably 2022, the way things are going, then I'll probably like oil the actual hair to give it a, a nice little glow. But for the most part, I just oil the scalp. And I oil my hair maybe once every couple of weeks, depending on how dry it is in California but I don't like overdo it because even oil can leave buildup residue. So I mostly just spray it with water and oil it if I need to. I listen to the hair. 
But yeah, let's massage it in. I guess I should do a length check, show you guys how long my longest lock is. Oh yeah, interesting fact about locks. Your locks are actually longest when they're wet. You know how loose natural hair shrinks when it's when it's wet? Locks actually get longer when they're wet because it shows you your true, the true length of your hair. So let's do a length check, shall we? It's right at the booty. Booty, 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 rock number one. Okay, so now to retwist. Let's pack one side up. And to retwist my hair, because it's gonna get dark soon and this camera is probably gonna die, I'm just gonna show you how I retwist the front so you can see. Yeah, there we go. Separate that. So I don't care too much about making the lines perfectly straight. I just grab and I retwist like so. I know that with loose natural hair, again, I, I had it for a few years before I decided to lock my hair. It takes a while to like, like wash day is a whole thing. So it takes a while to like wash, detangle, condition, co-wash, all that stuff. I think locks, it is easier to go through the whole process of like washing. Again, I don't, I don't condition, so that's fast. Washing, oiling, there's no detangling involved, which is great. I have not used a comb in many years. Don't plan to start again. It's very low maintenance for sure. If you're like me, who retwists four times a year, whereas if you retwist more often, and depending on how much locks you have in your head, it could be a bit more high maintenance. Just keep that in mind, depending on your tolerance for maintaining your hair, that could be a thing. And my hair is long enough now where I don't use clips, so I just retwist it. It stays retwisted at the roots. And for me, I want the hair to be a little curly this time, so I'm just gonna braid it this way. And I'll leave it this way overnight and it's gonna come out curly. And this is gonna be a whole process, y'all. I'm just gonna show y'all the finished product at the end. But before I show you guys the finished product, there's a misconception about having locks that people think when you have locks, you can only do your hair one way and it's so, you know, it's boring. Black women, we love to change our hairstyles as part of our heritage, our culture. Literally, black women all over the world, we love to change our hairstyles and I think it's wonderful and beautiful. Having locks does not stop you from changing your hairstyle as much as you want to. Honestly, people wear wigs with locks, people add extension braids with locks, people do bantu knots, they do curl, lock, uh, curl knots, they braid the hair like I'm doing or they cornrow it. There's a lot you can do with locks. It just depends on how high or low maintenance you want to be. Your comfort level, there's nothing wrong with either one. I'm an extremely lazy person when it comes to my hair. I've always had a lot of it. And once my mom stopped doing my hair and I had to figure out how to manage it myself, went natural, did the whole thing. I've done it all, literally. And at some point I was like, we're done. You can either cut this hair or you can find something that's gonna be low maintenance. And that's why I went with locks. And it has been the best spontaneous, ooh, I shook the camera, sorry y'all. The best spontaneous hair decision I've ever made in my life was just to get locks because it has an oil dripping down my face. It has just made my life so much easier. I put my hair in a bun most of the time. You do not have to do that. If you wanna do your hair in different styles, you can with locks. I just am lazy. <laughs> when it comes to doing hair. So basically if there's a wedding or there's an event that I'm going to, I'll braid my hair and make it curly or I'll make it super straight. But for the most part, I don't wanna do much to my hair because I have so many other things that I'm doing. So this is the beauty of having locks as a black woman. It just affords you the time to not spend on your hair if you don't want to. So again, wash your hair when it's dirty, wash it very well, keep it clean, twist it as often as you want to. I highly recommend you twist it less often than you think you need to because your roots need time to heal and grow. If you want to get locks, I say go for it. Just keep in mind the things that I talked about with regards to lint buildup and how heavy it gets and just making sure that you're taking proper care of it. And have fun with your hair. It's yours. Miriam, you're the voice of a period, weren't you? A menstrual period, A menstrual yes. period, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If you haven't watched the Graham Norton show, the talk show, it's the best talk show ever. He is hilarious. He gets celebrities to relax in ways that you can't see on American TV shows. But it's on YouTube, so you should watch it. And it's great when you're doing your hair because you just laugh and develop laugh lines from laughing and doing your hair.
All right, I'm gonna finish. I'm almost done. 